Okay, let's shift gears here a little bit and talk about another tool. Um, another tool that we get a lot of questions about is um, Spreadsheet Link. Spreadsheet Link is a tool that allows you to extract data from the Revit environment to a spreadsheet uh, format. Once it's in the spreadsheet, you can make changes to the data and then push those changes back into the Revit model. So uh, there's, this is a very powerful tool and there's a ton of different workflows um, that fit into this tool, which is one of the reasons we get so many questions about it, um, is because there's, there's not a um, sort of singular defined path um, or uh, you know, one process that this tool works for. Um, it really it fits into a large number of workflows, and in some cases there are some creative, you know, creative solutions that you have to come up with to you know get the data from one place and put it somewhere else. So, um, ironically, the most common question we get about Spreadsheet Link is, um, can it import a pre-formatted Excel document into Revit? Um, and the reason that's ironic is because that's actually a different tool that we have. Um, we have a different tool called Spreadsheet Drafter, which will take pre-made spreadsheet documents and recreate them in the Revit environment. So um, again, the workflow with Spreadsheet Link is always to export properties from the Revit model, um, get those into the spreadsheet, make changes, and then bring those changes back into the actual Revit elements. So um, with Spreadsheet Link, another question we receive frequently is, can the extracted data be sent to somebody else for modification? So for example, if I were to grab a, a door hardware schedule or something like that. Just grab my door schedule. Um, if I wanted to hand this off to to my hardware consultant and have them fill in the values, is that something I can do? Uh, the answer is absolutely yes. So once you've got your data pulled out into a spreadsheet format like this, um, we can go ahead and save this spreadsheet into an XLS, an XLS file or an Excel file. Um, we have several different formats that you can save it into. Um, but then this file can be handed off, it can be sent out of the office, um, changes can be made to it, and then you can receive that file back and still use it to update the elements in the Revit model, you know, provided those elements still exist. So, um, so yes, absolutely, you can send this information off to somebody else. So in the spreadsheet itself, um, another question that we receive a lot is, um, why can't I resize any of these uh, columns? Um, what we have done in here is we've actually locked the workbook uh, to help protect some of the formatting. So the first uh, three uh, rows of data and the first two columns, uh, those are all special cells that we use to help identify how to get this parameter about or these, this information back into the Revit model. And so we lock the workbook to help protect these um, just to make, ensure that we're able to pull the data back in. Now if you, um, if you have a need to reformat these, um, that's no problem. You can always, within Spreadsheet Link, go to the data tool and just choose unprotect workbook. We pre-populate the password for you, so all you have to do is click unprotect, um, and, uh, and, and now the workbook is um, fully adjustable. So I can resize things, I can move things around, I can change the colors, I can do whatever I need to. Um, that said, I'm also now, uh, I have also now unlocked all of the uh, protected cells that we were trying to keep you from messing with in the first place. So you just have to be a little bit careful once you've unprotected the workbook to make sure that these things aren't being modified. Otherwise, we won't be able to bring the data back in. So um, let's say we are taking this workbook and we're handing it off to somebody. Uh, what happens if that person does modify the spreadsheet? And one of the most common modifications that we'll see is somebody will just add a new column to host some data. You know, maybe they're running um, a formula, maybe they're doing, you know, something to to uh, manipulate the data in some way. So they've added a new column and there's a bunch of data out here um, that's that's not relevant to the, the extracted data or what we're going to import. So that's no problem. Again, this formatting up here is all very specific and what we'll do is if we identify a column or a series of columns that don't contain the proper information to bring that in. Uh, those values back into Revit, we'll simply ignore that column. So that's no big deal if somebody adds a new column. Um, we can handle that change. Even if it's in the middle of the data, um, that's not going to be a problem. We'll just go ahead and skip over that column and continue to import anything that we can identify. So um, let's see. Another, uh, another real common question then is um, Spreadsheet Link Express. You know, once you've gotten into Spreadsheet Link um, and we've got in here and we've modified values, um, we'll get users who ask, you know, what is what is this Spreadsheet Link Express for? And uh, what Spreadsheet Link Express does is it allows you to take um, pre-created settings. So if somebody can create settings using Spreadsheet Link, 
um, and those settings can be saved. And then using Spreadsheet Link Express, we can reapply those settings. Now, sort of the, the catch here is that in order for that to be effective, you need to have in those settings some sort of data manipulation saved. So um, some of the common ones that we do a lot are um, calculating values against other Revit model properties. So if you wanted to take um, area of rooms, for example, and do some sort of uh, math against the area of the rooms, um, you could build that into a formula and save that formula into the Spreadsheet Link Express settings. Um, what I've done is I've gone ahead and prepared an example here um, using a, a random between function in Excel. So let me just go ahead and load up some settings that I created uh, before the demo here. And um, so in here, what I did was I extracted uh, the generic models from my project. Um, I did filter down these models to just show the, the one family that I want to interact with. And I added the height parameter for that model. And I've checked off the height parameter to be a calculated value. What that calculated value is going to do is it's going to take any formula that's supplied here and it's going to push it through all of the parameter or all of the cells for this particular export. So all of these cells are, are using the random between function from Excel to randomly generate a number, in this case between 1,000 and 6,000. So uh, what that means is that every time the spreadsheet is opened, I'm going to get new values here. So um, how does this work? I'm going to go ahead and close this out and we'll use Spreadsheet Link Express to go ahead and apply those settings. And what it's going to do is it's going to adjust the height of all of these boxes. So we're going to get randomized heights on all of these boxes. So when I use Spreadsheet Link Express, we'll go ahead and choose to load the settings from the project. I'll grab my generic model shuffle settings here and just go ahead and click apply. And when I do, we'll see these all uh, jump and change. close this out. So you can see we get this cool randomized effect here, uh, basically just leveraging that random number generating function of Excel um, to create new heights for all of these. So the neat thing about that function is, again, every time the spreadsheet's open, you get different values. So if I grab Spreadsheet Link again and we rerun these settings, it's going to adjust these and all of these boxes are going to get new heights again. So um, that's just one example of how we can leverage Spreadsheet Link Express to modify the values of the objects in the project. So um, whether we're calculating against values in the project, um, like areas or parameter values on walls or things like that, um, or using an Excel function like I did here to generate a number, um, as long as that's saved into the settings in some way, we'll be able to go ahead and reapply that to the project.